Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're gonna be looking at Onda from Yoku Playing Cards. Now Yoku's quickly risen to become one of my favorite designers out there. It's Italian duo Anthony Holt, who does all the sort of business side of things, and artist Alessandra Gagliano, who does all the illustrations for the decks. They produced three other decks before, and if you haven't seen Filide, Green Man, or Hops and Barley, you're really missing out. Recommend going to check out those reviews on my channel and go grab a deck for yourself if you haven't seen those. But we're here to talk about Onda, their fourth deck that was released on Kickstarter last year. I'm excited for this one, so let's get right into it. Uh, Onda means wave in Italian, and fittingly, the deck is inspired by the ocean. The mysterious depths of the ocean are largely unexplored and contain all sorts of animal life and just mysteries throughout. And so this deck really combines both real life ocean creatures with a little bit of fantasy to produce sort of a mythology reality themed deck that I think really does nicely. Uh, and it comes in two different versions. You have the ultramarine version over here on the left, and on the right, we have the wave version. So it's onda, meaning wave or wave, wave. Uh, but two beautiful and strikingly different tuck cases. We're going to look at both of them for sure, but let's start out with the ultramarine deck. And uh, this one really captures that mystique of the ocean. It has that mysterious feel to it overall. The dark blue matte tuck case has this beautiful pale blue foiling. Now all of the work here on the tuck cases is done by Bochero and Newton, an Italian based printer who does phenomenal tuck cases, some of the best in the world. Their foiling, their embossing is always just so precise and you can really see it in the fine details on this one. You have the name of the deck, Onda and that blue foil right down the middle and then little bubbles, little pops of blue foil throughout. You can see that shining as it hits the light. And then the hints of waves that are just flowing around, all done with embossing. Just a really great look to it overall. Almost just sort of popping out, giving you a really subtle but fantastic feel to the tuck case. Uh, on the sides, you've got the name of the deck once more, Ondo, with a little bit more of that embossing making its way over. The other side, designed in Italy. Bottom has your ad copy, mentions Yoku playing cards, Boshero and Newton, who did the tuck cases, and Cardamundi who printed the cards. Top has Ondo once again with some little bubbles making their way around. And the back gives you a hint of the back design of the cards. I'm not gonna talk too much about those details, but take a look at that fantastic foiling and extra pops of color. You have the little fish swimming there with little hints of orange and then a darker blue foil, which looks great against that light blue foil is making up the rest of the background. Inner flaps here. Just features a small, simple Nautilus shell and some extra little ocean inspired details on the inner flaps there. You do get some really nice inner printing as well. Most of it's made up of this wave pattern that you see here. It continues all the way down the tuck case. A little bit hard to see in the dark there. And then you have a fish sort of leaping out of the water there on the larger inner flap on the inside. So really nice tuck case. Great job by, by Bashero and Newton on executing on a fantastic bit of artwork. But that's just the tuck, let's get a look at the cards. And here's the back design. Very similar feel overall to the art style that we saw on the tuck case itself. Uh, dark, dark blue card itself. And then it's covered with a series of sort of blue tones that match the ocean. The background is this almost squiggly lines, gives you the feel of waves flowing all the way around in a super intricate pattern. Let's see if I can zoom in here just so you can see some of that finer detail. You can see bubbles and waves all the way around forming this fantastic design. And then of course, your eyes drawn immediately to this flow of fish leaping out of the water in a splash. And you got the splash here with the fish kind of curling its way over. With that orangish peach color, almost gives the feel of like a koi fish or something like that to me. Uh, but great motion and flow on the card overall. And then finishes out with a very organic feeling dark blue poker border. I'll say the only knock I have on this is some of those details in the background get a little bit lost when you look at it at a distance. But when you get up close and really examine the card, you can 
just see so much fine detail that I really appreciate. So great job with the back of those cards. I'm a big fan. All right, extra cards. Your first ad card is gonna be a little bit of a story of the deck. Of course, talks about Yoku and who produced the cards, but tells you a little bit about the sea that really inspired the deck and some of the marine mythology. So a nice little ad card there. Uh, you also get a uh, blank card. A little bit odd considering I think that this is for the most part an art deck. So getting a gaff card, I would have preferred maybe a double backer or something with that. And then you get a pair of jokers and you can see some more of Alessandra's fantastic artwork on these. You get both a male and a female joker and they're both inspired by some of the mytho mythological creatures of the sea. The male joker is a merman, so half man, half fish. And you can see him flanked here by these beautiful and distinctive dragonfish, those flaring out fins with the sort of waves and tendrils going off of it, really striking. And that same feature is the, of the distinctive fins that you see on the dragonfish are sort of mimicked on some of these protrusions that are coming off of the merman himself. I love the sort of pensive and uh, determined look that he's got on his face too. But a great look to the merman. And then the female one, this is a siren. Sirens were known for luring sailors with their music. They're usually part human. So this one again, just like the merman is part human, part fish. Uh, the tail of this one is uh, actually from a flying fish. And you can see those sort of flares or almost like a skirt that's draped around her. And then she's covered with nautilus here. These uh, segmented shells, one of the oldest shells that are in the entire ocean. Great feel to it. And I love that her hair sort of mimics the tentacles or tendrils of that Nautilus. Uh, really kind of echoes, almost like the Nautilus is her spirit animal or something. But great mimicry there and giving you an extra feel to the Jokers. So great artwork, one-way Jokers, just says Joker, Joker in the corners. All right, the Aces. The Ace of Spades is definitely your power ace and features a lot of extra little details. Very coral reef inspired to me. Uh, you have that large sort of rounded, really super flared out spade pip. It's done in a really dark blue, almost looks black, but it's a dark blue. And lots of little bits going here and there. Looks a little bit like coral reef bits that are just growing off of the spade. You have these sort of waves coming through in the background and then a large curled shell at the top. Super intricate design work. Again, just like everything else on this deck. I think really well done. By the way, appreciate that they didn't put any extra words on here and just let the artwork sing out. I think that was a great call. Uh, you get the nice, easy to read pip and index in the corner, but you get a little preview of the custom pips that are gonna be there for the spades. As you go to the other three aces, they don't have as much detail, but they do feature enlarged versions of the beautiful colored pips on these. They're sort of a two color, so you have the red and then the dark blue of the black cards. Uh, and the design on them is just sort of a white negative space look at just some waves that are flowing their way through part of each of the pips. Really great feel. I, I like that the organic flow was kind of maintained on the aces as well, or in those large pips. So there's your four aces. Uh, your number cards are relatively standard, I would say. Uh, they do feature those custom pips with that wave just sort of creeping its way up the spade pip. Nice, I, I love that interesting shape on the spade pips as well. So as you go through the number cards, really small pips, but they're pretty standard layout. Nothing too crazy on these, just those beautiful custom pips. And then into the diamonds, they're kind of a red there, a little bit of like an orange red, I would say. And then into the clubs, very distinctive shapes on the pips themselves that kind of give them a unique feel, not to mention, of course, that background on them. And then the hearts, very flared out, kind of short and fat uh, hearts flaring out there. All right, so that is the number cards, but let's look at the court cards. This is really where Alessandra's artwork shines the most. And I, in my opinion, these court cards are absolutely beautiful. They all feature two-way courts, and this is where we get into the mythology part of the deck. It's where we're gonna explore some of the monarchs that may rule under the ocean. 
each one of them represents a different sort of characteristic, maybe something that would use to survive in the ocean. And each one has a spirit animal that sort of fits along with that idea. So first off, we have the Jack of Spades. He represents tolerance. And you can see that beautiful and sort of determined look on his face. I love the flowing hair, the flowing details down the center. You can see that giant squid there in the middle, for example. That squid, by the way, is his spirit animal. The squid, kind of like him, uh, will defend himself with non-lethal force. So the squids will squirt out ink to protect themselves. And in a similar way, the jack embodying tolerance chooses to kind of hold himself back and serve as sort of a pacifist defender. So the squid's a great pairing. But I love the colors. Evokes again the sort of the feel of the coral reef. You can see the literal coral coming out the side and sort of that blue-green palette. Now the queen of spades. This one represents temperance. Uh, really uh, resists all vices to try to ensure survival. And her creature is actually the seahorse. You can see a little tiny seahorse over there on the side. The seahorse is this really slow and deliberate swimmer who can also be really, really fierce with when challenged. And so something that temperance really kind of latches onto. I love here this almost like tattoos down her arm, but really great artwork. Love the variety of colors too. Something very fitting for under the ocean. You know, if you ever see the coral reef really marked by just tons of flowing color. And last but not least of the spades, this is the king of spades representing adaptability, the ability to change with your environment. And so his spirit animal uh, is, his spirit animal is the jellyfish. And you can sort of see jellyfish tentacles making up his hair, little jellyfish swimming off here to the side. And jellyfish will very much just sort of flow in the water, swimming with the waves. But if you come close to them, they will sting you. So that sort of, passive, you know, moving along feel, but with the ability to defend itself and definitely embodies the king. I, I love that mess of hair on his head, like the jellyfish tentacles. All right, now you can really see some, some of the explosions of color coming through as we get into the diamonds. So first of all, we have the Jack of Diamonds who represents wisdom, the ability to discern with his really balanced nature. And he's pictured with a couple of different fish. Over here, this little purple one over here, this is the coal tang. And then over here, you have the blue-cheeked butterfly fish. So kind of two different types of fish, two very different vivid colors, kind of symbolic of that balance that the Jack has in sort of evoking wisdom. All right, next up is the queen of diamonds. Love the color scheme on this one, those greens and those purples. She represents knowledge and possesses the memory of the waters, really serves as an advisor. Her animal is one, is a really interesting one, the psychedelic mandarin. You can see these really bizarre looking fish over here. And it doesn't even capture how cool these fish look in person. They kind of have this 70s far out color scheme to them and really brings, to, it's meant to bring to mind the journeys that your mind can take when exploring the depths of knowledge. And so that's the sort of symbolic tie on those. And we have the King of Diamonds. The King of Diamonds represents prudence, worries about the dangers of the world, always very cautious. And you can see that really worried look on his face, uh, almost like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. Uh, his spirit animal is called the Gulf Signal Blenny. You can see it, uh, or it's swimming up here in the corner and then another one swimming here in the center. These kind of flared out fins there. These are actually really, really tiny fish. I think they grow to about five centimeters long uh, and have these like super distinctive protrusions. So great little flares there and love how it just sort of adds shape to this one. Another really cool twist of hair with his beard and everything. Love that style. All right, then we go to the clubs. Clubs are next. Uh, the Jack of Clubs represents sacrifice. So sometimes in order to change the world, in order to get to your goals, there's gonna have to be sacrifice all the way. And the Jack really represents that. Uh, his animal over here is the trigger fish right here. Uh, the uh, Specifically, this is the orange lined trigger fish. Uh, the trigger fish is one of those fish that really uh, helps out the coral reef. So it plays a vital role in the maintenance and the sort of balance that takes place in the coral reef. So you can see him there swimming amongst some of the 
plants and life that maybe make up part of that coral reef. So there's the Jack of Clubs with Sacrifice. Uh, Queen of Clubs represents tenacity. Uh, she'll see her goals through to the end at any cost and always maintains power and control, never surrendering. You can see this very sort of serene confidence on her face. I love that feel that she's got there. And she's guided by her spirit animal, the beta fish, uh, also known as the Siamese fighting fish. Interestingly, this is the only freshwater fish, I believe, that's on the list. You'll see these kept as pets a lot. Uh, the beta fish, though, is meant or is known to be a really territorial fish. You can't even put two beta fish in the same bowl because one of them will kill the other. Uh, but they have these beautiful, really flowing fins and just a great looking fish. Uh, great pairing here. And again, you can kind of see the color palette changing again. So here we have a lot more reds and purples in this one. All right, now turning to the King of Clubs. King of Clubs represents strategy. Uh, very sharply intelligent uh, and knows how to plan and analyze the outcome of every move to ensure the best chance for success. Uh, and his creature here is the octopus. You can see those purple octopus curling in from the left and the right. Uh, very similarly, the octopus will kind of defend itself with all manner of different strategies. Uh, it'll blend in with its surroundings so it has the ability to sort of camouflage into its surroundings. It can also spray ink to allow it to escape. So it has lots of different sort of weapons at its disposal and it's a great fit for a strategy. You can see him there lost in thought. Really like that look to him. Love the facial expression that he's got. All right and now we get into the hearts. Now the ocean is filled with tons of diversity of life in the sea and that's really what's captured with the jack of hearts here he represents respect espouses kindness to all other living creatures of the sea and it's really a celebration of that diversity uh really striking look to him here i'm not sure he's bald or kind of has a mohawk there but a really striking uh, pose that he strikes there, that he um, that he makes there. Uh, he's depicted with two different fish that are sort of as beautiful and mysterious as he is. These very dark fish in the center here. You have the Achilles tang, that's the sort of more solid one, and then over here is the gem tang, the spotted one. Really kind of dark and mystery to those fish right there, and kind of a very fitting pairing with the Jack of Hearts. All right, then we go to the Queen of Hearts. She represents fantasy, has this really vivid and active imagination, and it's that skill that drives her, de her desire to improve her reality. And she's paired with another really beautiful fish right over here on the side. This over here is the Mandarin Dragonet, uh, one of the few fish out there that's bright enough to sort of match with fantasy. And this is probably the most vivid color scheme on the, you know, in the entire deck, really fitting for fantasy. Lots of reds, yellows, oranges, kind of a sunburst feel to this one, but lots of detail going on in this one. And last but not least is the King of Hearts representing intensity. Uh, he's this young sovereign who really trusts his guts and his sword above all else. And that's really what he lives and dies by. Has no fear for any consequence. And his fish is right up here. This is the blue surgeon fish. Actually, by the way, this is the same fish as Dory from the, uh, from the Finding Nemo movies. But you can see him here almost in a pose very similar to like the Suicide King that's classic for the King of Hearts. And it has it uh, almost looks like a, a handle of a sword gripped to his side but really determined look on his face overall. And you can see just that level of intensity in his stare. So that's the King of Hearts. And that's the deck. Phenomenal work with the court cards overall. Now, before we talk about handling, let's talk about the second deck that came in the series, and that's the Wave Edition. Uh, now, you will see right off just the beautiful differences in the tuck case. Where the ultramarine deck maybe celebrated the mystery and the depths of the sea, this one really comes to the surface where you can see the flowing waves over the top of the water. Done with a really bright color scheme, this super bright blue, uh, and then almost three different colors of blue here, but you have the super bright blue, more of an electric blue, and then almost a teal here. Three great colors, and then just a mixture of flowing waves all the way around it twist up to form the name of the deck at the top with Onda. Really love this. Love how the waves just continue 
all the way around the tuck case with an especially large splash on the back. Great use of the foil against that white background. Just a really striking tuck case all around. The interior tuck features extra little splashes on the inner flaps here and a very similar design, but obviously a different color on the inner printing as well. So same design with those waves and then the fish, uh, but this time done in more of that teal foil. Love this tuck case and love it as a contrast to the mysterious dark blue of the uh, ultramarine version. Now the faces of the cards in this one are exactly the same. There's no differences to this one overall. Same colors on the cards themselves, but the back designs feature a really different look to them overall. Again, continuing with that wave theme, this one has a borderless design that is an absolute explosion of waves. Multiple shades of blue forming through there, and you can just get the feel of motion and flow of water all the way through. And that borderless design really looks great in fans as well. It gives you that nice band going down the side. If I could do a left-handed fan, which I barely can, you can see even more color on that side. But really great contrast on this one. Would have liked to have seen more differences on the cards themselves. I'll say, you know, there's not a lot of variation on the cards or there is no variation on the cards. So would have liked to see something there, but the back design and the tuck case really give a unique feel to this overall. Now with the Kickstarter campaign, and you may see these floating around out there, there were actually two Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter exclusive versions of the decks that were printed as well. Now they both feature the exact same cards inside. It was a stretch goal to get to different cards. So these are essentially a tuck swap. I'll talk a little bit about the differences on these. So the first one over here is the Ultramarine Kickstarter version, and they look really, really similar. Same dark blue, but the foil color has been changed. So we have the blue over here, you get silver foil on this one. Definitely stands out more. I actually like the, the blue version a little bit better but the back design on this one is really where it shines. You get that gold foil uh, replacing that sort of, sort of orange look over here. The gold fish and that gold background look outstanding. I think that one really, really came to life. So some slight differences there, and you'll see this little corner tuck seal over here where it's numbered 20 out of 500. So that is the limited version of the Ultramarine deck. And there's also a limited version of the wave, the wave deck, we'll call it the silver wave deck. Uh, some of the blue here, that teal color has been replaced with silver to give you a very different feel overall. Again, I actually like the original version better. I like the shades of blue that are all throughout here, but the silver gives a beautiful feel of its own right. And just like the limited ultramarine version, this one is also numbered on that corner tuck seal. So two extra little versions and not done yet. I know there's a lot to show off here. Uh, other kind of goodies you got from the Kickstarter campaign that maybe you'll see flowing around. Anybody that got six or more decks actually got this fantastic half brick case. These were also printed by Brochero and Newton. Uh, and you can again see some of their fantastic work on this one. Same material as the Ultramarine deck. You get to see a nice and large foiled version of that fish jumping out of the water on the front. It says Onda on the side. Beautiful embossing all the way around. And as you open it up, even includes a little story of the deck itself and some of that wave printing on the inside. So really nice addition to get that half uh, that half brick as well. And there is one more edition that's floating out there and that's this one right here. Now this one actually didn't come from the Kickstarter campaign. It's patterned after the Ultramarine deck. This one's called the Aquamarine deck and this one comes from the Inner Circle. And what's the Inner Circle you may be asking? Well, the Inner Circle is the monthly subscription service that Yoku does. I'm a member, had been since the beginning, and this was one of the decks that they sent out to their subscribers. Uh, it's a great tuck swap and card swap from the original Onda decks. Obviously it's done on this aqua color here, very different color and features really striking copper foil on it overall. The back design features copper colored fish. This one actually may be my favorite out of the ultramarine versions. I absolutely love that bright color on this one. Copper foil continues, and then you have that silver foil as the interior color. The card faces are the same as the other decks, 
but the card backs are swapped out to match that, uh, that uh, aqua color overall. You get the changed back design to the color back design uh, and features that sort of peach colored fish, a little bit lighter of a feel. So here's the original ultramarine and the aquamarine side by side. So one extra little thing, if you didn't get a hold of this one in the Kickstarter campaign, I'd recommend go check it out Yoku's website. This one, I believe, is actually available now. It was originally only available to Inner Circle members, but I believe anybody can get these now. So I'll put a link down to Yoku's site where you can check this one out for yourself. And with that, I'm gonna take a breath and say that is the sort of line of Onda. Beautiful series overall. Now, let's talk really quickly about handling and stock of the cards. The cards themselves are done on Cardamundi's true, um, Cardamundi's uh, slimline stock with that B9 True Linen finish. It's my favorite stock and finish in the world. Nice, super thin feel of the cards, really nice and snappy, and they are like butter. They fan beautifully, cut super smoothly. This is my favorite out there. I love the feel of these. Has that really distinctive pattern. If I tilt in the light, you can see that True Linen finish all the way down. So these are gonna handle absolutely beautifully. Uses of this deck. Well, if I was gonna get this deck, I would say as an art deck, hands down. Alessandro Gagliano does some of the best artwork out there and this deck really lives up to her standard. So as an art deck, gonna be absolutely great. I think you could use this for gameplay as well. Really add a little bit of extra interest to it. Yeah, you could use this for cardistry, especially that wave deck would look great in motion and kind of spins overall. So this, I think, is a really functional deck. One I'd recommend opening, but wouldn't mind grabbing a few to kind of keep for the collection and keep in pristine collection on the uh, condition on the shelf as well. So that is the look at Onda from Yoku. Hope you enjoyed this little bit longer review. Love diving really deep into Yoku decks, no pun intended. The stories, the mythology and everything that, behind, that are behind them, they really sort of deserve that deeper look. So hope you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews and unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see in the future and I'll see you for the next one.